What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to another question dealing with the discriminants. So we have to find the value or values of M in each of these cases here, where each of these functions has to have at least one real root, meaning that it has to have at least one x-intercept, right? So that's another way that this could have been worded. So just in general, if a function, notice that all of these are quadratics, by the way, and they're all in standard form. So they're all in this format here, ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, if this function in general is going to have at least one real root, well, how many roots, what's the max amount? It could have a max of two. So there are three scenarios. Either there's no roots, there's one root, or there are two roots. And bringing in the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, if b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, then there's no roots, right? We can't square root a negative number in that quadratic formula. If b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, there's gonna be one root. And then if b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero, then there's gonna be two roots. So you gotta be careful with the wording here. It says has at least one real root. So notice that it could have one root or two roots. So it could either be equal to zero or greater than zero, the discriminant. And so what we're gonna be looking for in this question is when does b squared minus 4ac, when is that gonna be greater than or equal to zero? Right, if it's said that it has only one root, then we'd be looking when does it equal zero? If it's said that when does it have two roots or more than one root, we'd be looking at when it's greater than zero but because it says has at least one real root, it could have one root or two roots. So we'd be looking, we'd be combining these and looking for when it's greater than or equal to zero. And then if it said has no roots, then we'd be looking for when it's negative. But in this case, we're not gonna be doing that. So just wanted to make that clear first. So we're gonna be looking for when b squared minus 4ac is greater than or equal to zero in all of these cases. And so really what we gotta do, taking this first function, is we have to figure out, I'll write it out over here, for number one, what's the A value, what's the B value, what's the C value? And then we just take those values, plug it in there. So notice the A value would be four. The B value would be negative five. You gotta be careful with your signs over here. And then the C value would just be this M over here, right? Remember it's ax squared plus bx plus c. So whenever you see a negative, it would be like, you could write this as 4x squared plus negative 5x, right? To get it in this format, plus the c value. So the b value would be negative five. Same thing over here, the b value would be negative 10. The c value, in this case would be negative m in number two, right? Which is gonna affect the answer. But we'll get there, but just wanna make a heads up on that. So a is four, b is negative five, the c is m. We just take these, plug it in there, so we'd have negative five squared minus four times four times m greater than or equal to zero. And so we would just solve right there. So this would end up being 25 minus 16m. And then we just isolate for the m. So we could bring the 25 over, but then when we divide by negative 16, we're gonna have to flip this sign. So I'm gonna actually bring the negative 16m over, turn it into positive 16. And then when we divide at this point, we don't have to flip that sign. We don't have to worry about that. So m would be less than or equal to, this doesn't simplify any further. So 25 over 16. So as long for number one, as M is less than or equal to 25 over 16, 
as long as that m value is less than or equal to this, then this function here is going to have at least one real root. If it's equal to 25 over 16, it's going to have one root. If it's less than 25 over 16, it's going to have two roots. Right, so that's the answer to number one. What about number two? So what would the A value, the B value, and then the C value in this case be? Well, the A value would be five, the B value would be negative 10, and then the C value, as mentioned before, would be negative M, right? Because it's like plus negative M plus that C value, right? This is really important in this case because it's gonna affect that final answer, so you gotta be careful. So plugging this in here, we would have negative 10 uh, squared minus four times five times uh, negative m. When's that gonna be greater than or equal to zero? So this would be 100. Negative four times five is negative 20 times negative m. The two negatives would turn into a positive. And that's why it's important because it's gonna affect that inequality symbol. If this was positive, then the answer would be completely different. And so isolating for that M, let's bring the 100 over. Let's keep the positive 20 here so we don't have to worry about flipping the sign when we divide by positive 20. So M would be greater than or equal to negative five. So that's what the answer would be for number two. Right, and if you put in positive m over here, you'd end up with m being, um, you'd end up with, this would be negative 20, so you'd end up with m being less than or equal to positive five, which would be a completely different answer than that right there. Right, so just be careful with these. So m has to be greater than or equal to negative five for this. So for it to have at least one real root, m has to be at least negative five. If it's equal to negative five, then it's gonna have one root. If it's greater than negative five, then it's gonna have two roots, right? So m has to be greater than or equal to negative five. And then three and four, these ones are gonna be a little bit more tricky. So with three, notice the a value is three, b value is negative m, C value is positive five. And so taking this, plugging in here, we'd have negative M squared minus four times three times five is greater than or equal to zero. Negative M to the power two is just M squared. This would end up being minus 60. So when is that gonna be greater than or equal to zero or when is m squared gonna be greater than or equal to 60? So this one's a little bit more tricky because there's actually two answers. So notice m squared, that's just a quadratic, right? So if we take that quadratic and graph it, just a standard quadratic like this, right? This is m squared. When is it gonna be greater than 60? Let's say 60 is right there. When is it gonna be greater than 60? Well, notice it's gonna be greater than 60 in this area and in that area right there. So for what M values is that gonna happen? Well, basically when does M squared equal 60? Well, it's going to equal 60 um, at plus or minus root 60, right? So root 60 and then negative root 60. And then root 60 actually simplifies, so you gotta be careful here as well. So I'm first gonna write the answer in terms of the root 60s and then I'll simplify the root 60s after. So notice m squared can be greater than or equal to 60 when m is either greater than or equal to root 60 
or m is less than negative root 60. Right, so there's two solutions in this case because this is squared. That's why I was saying this one's gonna be a little bit more tricky. And then number four, same thing is gonna happen. You're gonna be dealing with a quadratic like this. So when is m squared gonna be greater than a value? Whenever you get something like this, it's always gonna, m is always gonna be greater than or equal to a value or less than or equal to a value. It's gonna happen here or here. If this was flipped over, if this was less than or equal to 60, then it would be between two values. It would be one is a less than 60, it would be in this area over here, right? So you may wanna make just a general note here. Whenever you get something like this, m squared or any variable squared is greater than or equal to a positive number, the answer is always gonna be on the outside. If it's less than or equal to a number, it's always gonna be between two values. So you would combine these two. You would say negative 60 or m is greater, like you would write uh, something like that. Right? You would combine them into one equality. Um, but in this case, they're just two separate areas, so we keep these two inequalities separate. So those are the two answers to, um, to number three. Now, if you wanted to simplify this, um, m is greater than or equal to root 60. Let's rewrite this. Or less than or equal to negative root 60. Now, root 60, you could simplify this as um, root 4 times root 15, which will be 2 root 15, right? Root 60 and 2 root 15 is the same thing. And then root 15, that doesn't simplify any further. So another way this could be written, this is a multiple choice test. Let's say m is greater than or equal to 2 root 15, or m is less than or equal to negative 2 root 15. Right, so that's another way that this could be presented. So either this or this, those are the answers to number three. And then finally, number four, um, this one's gonna be a little bit tricky as well. So notice that the A value is two, the B value is negative M, and notice the C value is this entire thing over here, M plus six. Because remember, the c value is just a constant, ax squared plus bx plus c, and m is a constant. So a constant plus another constant is just going to be a constant itself at the end. So we'd end up with m plus 6 over here. And then obviously the b value is going to be in front of the x. It's going to be negative m. And then the a value is going to be 2. And so the c value in this case is two expressions which is actually going to add some complexity here. So we would figure out when is negative m squared minus 4 times 2 times m plus 6 greater than or equal to 0. And so in this case, we'd end up with m squared minus 8 m plus 6 greater than or equal to 0. You want to expand this. and you'd end up with that right there. So basically, when is this quadratic gonna be greater than or equal to zero? Best thing to do is to graph the quadratic in this case. Because we have an 8m here, you don't wanna bring the 48 over because it's just gonna be a headache figuring out when is this greater than or equal to that. If the m squared was just by itself, then you could just follow the steps that we did in number three. But if you have an 8m here, it's best to have everything on the left side and finding out when is it greater than or equal to zero because you could just find the intercepts of this quadratic. Notice that this quadratic here, first off, it's gonna open up 
because we have a one right there. And then if factors, into that. And so graphing that quadratic, notice the intercepts would be negative 4, positive 12. Right? And then it's opening up. So we know this quadratic is going to look something like this. This is not to scale, but really the most important part is getting the intercepts over here. Because now it's clear to see when is this quadratic going to be greater than or equal to zero? Well, it's going to be here and here. Okay, and visually we could see basically when m is greater than or equal to 12 or when m is less than or equal to negative 4. So those are the actual answers to number 4. Right, so one more time we're finding when is the discriminant going to be greater than or equal to zero? Well, we plug everything in, we end up with when is this quadratic greater than or equal to zero? Meaning, when is it above this axis, this x-axis over here, or this y value of zero? When is it greater than or equal to zero? Well, either over here, when m is greater than or equal to 12, or when m is less than or equal to negative. And it's nice in this case it factored smoothly. Maybe this is not always going to factor smoothly. If you get a quadratic here, you may have to use the quadratic formula. Could have been even more complex to get these values here, right? To get the x-intercepts. But because this factored smoothly, getting the x-intercepts wasn't too bad, right? So m being greater than or equal to 12 or m being less than or equal to negative 4, those m values would ensure that this quadratic has at least one real root.